What's going on everyone? I hope this video finds you well. My name is Jonathan Riddell and today we're going to talk about the ensembles of statistical mechanics and when and why uh, we would use them in any given context. Although we talk about these ensembles all the time on the channel, uh, it might be helpful to have a summary of them in one video. Um, but for those of you who are already very familiar with this topic, there is also an Easter egg at the end of the video where I will present two non-typical ensembles that you might find in research articles uh, coming out in today's literature. The physical settings we will be interested in are the standard ones of statistical mechanics, that is lots of particles, they're all interacting, and an assumption of equilibrium. We model that equilibrium with a probability distribution on the available microstates. So in principle, we might talk about modeling magnetism uh, with spins or perhaps particles in a box uh, with kinetic and potential energy. For simplicity, we will assume our microstates can be listed discreetly, either finitely or infinitely, and avoid the continuous case, though these ensembles can be easily generalized to the continuous case. Our first physical setting uh, will be a closed and isolated system with some number of particles uh, or lattice sites and a corresponding volume. This makes our thermodynamic variables the number of particles, the energy, and the volume of our system. As we have mentioned in previous videos, we can arrive at an equal a priori probability distribution for the microstates uh, from a variety of different arguments. My favorite, as you all know, is the principle of maximum entropy, which all ensembles here can be easily derived from. So let's label our microstates as usual, x1 through xn. In a closed and isolated system, we know that the energy is fixed at some constant e. Uh, perhaps we know this up to some uncertainty delta. So we say that the microcanonical ensemble is defined by making each microstate that is energetically accessible equal probable. And that's written in the following way. Here, omega is the number of energetically accessible microstates, and if we label the energies as Ej, the expression for the expectation value of energy is given by the following expression. Using the Gibbs entropy formula as seen here, we see that we get the Boltzmann entropy back for the entropy of our microcanonical ensemble. We can then proceed to use our thermodynamic relations in terms of energy and entropy to calculate other quantities like specific heat or temperature. For example, we can express the inverse temperature beta as a derivative with respect to the Boltzmann entropy in terms of the energy itself. Calculations in the microcanonical ensemble are usually looked at and indeed are significantly harder than other ensembles. So let's move on to something a little easier to work with analytically. Our next physical context will be a system connected to a heat bath where it can exchange energy between the bath and itself, but not particles. In this context, we use the canonical ensemble where we give probabilistic weights to the uh, microstates in the following way. Z here uh, is called the partition function, and as we have seen in the past, it is really the key thing that we want to compute to complete problems in statistical mechanics. Beta, as you have probably guessed it, is the inverse temperature. If you want to see this particular ensemble in action, check out my video deriving the ideal gas law. The definition for the partition function z comes from the fact that we want all probabilities to sum to 1, so we define the partition function in the following way. Since our system can exchange energy with the heat bath, energy is no longer completely constant, and instead we will have some variation or fluctuations in the energy. So our new thermodynamic variables will be the particle number, the inverse temperature beta, and the volume. We can express the average energy of our system as the following expression. This can be re-expressed in terms of the partition function in this little neat formula here. 
And if we appeal to the Gibbs entropy again and type in our probabilities, we arrive at a nice relationship between the partition function and energy um, and the entropy. From thermodynamics, we can identify uh, the expression on the left hand side minus kvt uh, natural log of the partition function as the Helmholtz free energy. This then gives us a way to relate the partition function through the free energy in terms of other thermodynamic variables. For example, we can compute the pressure with the following expression. We found this expression by just reading off the standard definition from the free energy, which is this formula here. Uh, pressure is equal to the negative derivative of the free energy with respect to changes in the volume. The next scenario is really similar. What if instead of only being able to exchange energy with the heat bath, what if we could also exchange particles? This leads us to the grand canonical ensemble. Our new thermodynamic variables then are mu for the chemical potential, beta, and v. To each microstate now, we associate some particle number and j. We then assume our system has an average number of particles, but there are some fluctuations or variations in that number as time goes on. From here, we get the probability distribution as written here in terms of the energies and the particle numbers. Q here is called the grand partition function, and it's defined similarly to the regular partition function. We can, of course, write out our expectation value for the energy and the number of particles in terms of these uh, probability distributions as the following expressions. If we take the natural logarithm of the grand partition function and the derivative with respect to the inverse temperature, we find the following expression. This expression tells us a fundamental relationship between the particle number and the energy with respect to the grand parti uh, partition function. We could have also seen that from the definition of the particle number expectation value that we could write the particle number expectation value in terms of a derivative of the grand partition function or the natural logarithm of the grand partition function with respect to changes in mu. So again, taking this probability distribution and typing it into the Gibbs entropy, we find another uh, relationship between the grand partition function and our thermodynamic variables. We find that this expression allows us to identify the grand potential from thermodynamics in terms of the grand partition function. And we can similarly read off from thermodynamics uh, relationships like the following expression for the pressure. And this allows us to compute pressure, as we see here, in terms of our grand partition function. So now that we've covered the basics, let's cover two ensembles that would be common to see in a scientific article. First, the generalized Gibbs ensemble. For this one, let's imagine an isolated system governed by some Hamiltonian H. Up until now, we have been ambiguous with whether or not the dynamics are classical or quantum mechanical. But for this uh, example, let's specifically appeal to the Heisenberg equation, where we assume that the observable does not have any explicit time dependence. Now, suppose we have a set of observables I with superscript J with the property that they commute with the Hamiltonian. This means that they are integrals of motion, or, na or namely, assuming that we start in some pure state psi, the integrals of motion have expectation values that are time independent. If we wait long enough, we might expect that the system will equilibrate to something that looks like statistical mechanics. If that's true, we would need our ensemble to obey the expectation values given by our initial conditions for the integrals of motion, since they are unchanging. This is where the generalized Gibbs ensemble comes into play. So from here, I'm going to assume that you know the density matrix formalism of quantum mechanics for ease of notation and, and presentation. If this is unfamiliar to you, check out my video crash course in density matrices link in the description. If my system reaches equilibrium, we know that the equilibrium state will need identical energy to our initial state, so it must obey the following equation, where we have called the equilibrium state rho subscript e. 
But this isn't the only integral of motion. That is, energy is not the only thing conserved in our system. We know that our equilibrium state must also obey the following expectation values. So this looks like a maximum entropy problem, right? If we look for the most unbiased distribution uh, to predict equilibrium, the equilibrium ensemble would look something like the following expression. Where the GGE here stands for the Generalized Gibbs Ensemble, in the future we will cover this ensemble in more detail and even show examples of its use. But for now, we can just say that the Lagrange multipliers lambda subscript j are determined in such a way that our ensemble has all of the correct expectation values for all of the integrals of motion. So last but not least is the so-called eigenstate ensemble. Suppose we have a Hamiltonian uh, governing some quantum system H. It's typical to imagine perhaps a lattice of spins, fermions, or bosons. Then we write the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian in the following way. The eigenstate uh, ensemble is written as the outer product of some energy eigenket with itself. So this is definitely a pure state, so why call it an ensemble? Well, the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis tells us that if we cut our system into two subsystems, A and B, then the eigenstate EK agrees with the microcanonical average for observables on the subsystem A. This tells us that the energy uh, eigenstates themselves encode the averages we are interested in computing in statistical mechanics. If this sounds interesting, check out my two videos on the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis. I'll put their links in the description. But that's it for today. Uh, in this video, we covered three common ensembles to run that we run into in textbooks, and two which are pretty common in, 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 the, in the literature coming out today. This list, of course, isn't exhaustive, but it's a really good place to start. I hope you liked the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.